Hey everybody, it's David. Huge news from NASA. Just two days ago, their latest planetary mission called Juno arrived at Jupiter and entered successfully into orbit of the gas giant. Juno is a billion dollar spacecraft that weighs a bit more than a pickup truck and it has just completed a five year voyage on its way to Jupiter. What's remarkable is that Juno is only the second spacecraft built by humankind to enter orbit of this king of the solar system planets, Jupiter. The name of the spacecraft is also great. It comes from the Roman Greek mythology. And in particular, Juno was the wife of the god Jupiter. And it was said that her power was that she could see through the clouds which Jupiter put around himself in order to obscure the mischief that he was getting up to. So that name is pretty appropriate because indeed Juno's scientific mission is to see through the clouds on top of Jupiter and to perceive the secrets and the interior structure of this gas giant. In honor of that, in fact, the spacecraft actually has three little Lego figurines on board. One which looks like Galileo, one which looks like Jupiter, and one which looks like Juno. If you look at a picture of the spacecraft itself, it has a pretty cool design, I think. It has these three wing-like structures coming out of it, which is definitely a very unique design. Now, that's not just a cool aesthetic. Those structures actually serve a function, and that is that unlike previous missions to the outer solar system, Juno is not powering itself through the decay of radioactive elements such as plutonium. Instead, it is using sunlight, and therefore those structures, those wings, are solar panels. Now, because Jupiter is five times further away from the sun than the earth is, it receives 25 times less sunlight. So that's why Juno needs such large solar collectors. Put together, Juno's three solar panels have a collecting area of about 750 square feet, which is about the square footage of a one-bedroom apartment, or I guess here in Manhattan that might be a two-bedroom apartment. The orbital insertion of Juno around Jupiter was pretty hairy for the NASA team, and that's because right now there's about a 48-minute communication lag time. So that means that for 48 minutes you don't even know whether your spacecraft is still alive or dead. Because of this huge lag time, a human back on the Earth can't possibly remotely pilot Juno. Juno has to pilot itself with some degree of artificial intelligence. And back on Earth, we just have no choice but to put faith in the machine. In order for Juno to get captured into a stable orbit around Jupiter, it has to slow itself down by over 1200 miles per hour in a time span of just 35 minutes. So to do that, Juno kind of flips over, points its engine nozzle towards Jupiter and initiates a hard retro burn for just over half an hour. What's amazing is that during this half an hour period, Juno actually burnt through 800 kilos of its onboard fuel, which was about two thirds of its initial supply. So obviously there's a few risks to Juno doing this kind of maneuver. One is that, for example, Juno is no longer pointing its solar panels towards the sun and therefore its power supply has been cut off. So Juno is running on battery power during this time and it has to be able to, by itself, find a way to reorient its solar panels towards the sun and come back to life. During this time, there's also an increased risk of micrometeorites hitting the engine, which could of course be catastrophic. On top of that, Jupiter itself is a high radiation environment. So that radiation fries electronics and therefore the Juno team actually had to switch off all of the non-essential electronics during this maneuver. But despite those risks, NASA was successful and Juno is now safely moving along on a so-called capture orbit. The capture orbit is a relatively wide elliptical orbit that basically gives the Juno team plenty of time to check over all of the instrumentation and make sure everything's working after both this five year voyage and also the orbital insertion itself. The plan now is for Juno to sit in this orbit until about mid-October, at which point it will use some of its remaining fuel to get into a much tighter orbit around Jupiter, and then it can begin its main science operations. At that point, we can expect Juno to start telling us about the 3D structure of the magnetic field around Jupiter, which in turn tells us about the interior structure of the planet itself. The spacecraft also has infrared cameras, which will allow it to peer through the clouds on top of Jupiter and be able to watch things like the convection patterns occurring within the atmosphere of the planet. But Juno is really focused on Jupiter itself and not so much the moons of Jupiter, objects like Europa. And that's just because if you want to do both Jupiter and the moons in one go, you're talking about a much more expensive mission. Actually, in order to protect the Jovian moons from potential biological contamination, 
of microbes which could be attached to the Juno spacecraft. The plan is to deorbit Juno in February 2018, thereby safely plunging it into the atmosphere of Jupiter. Now here at the Cool Worlds Lab, we're working really hard to try and discover analogues of Jupiter around other stars, so exoplanets. And you can click here for a video we made about one of our more recent discoveries. Ultimately, for us to have a better understanding of the most influential planet in our solar system is not only going to help us to reveal the story behind our own solar system's origins, but it's also going to give us a baseline against which to compare all of these other exoplanets that we are discovering. So if you ever any questions about the Juno mission or Jupiters in general then please do put a question down in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. Thanks for watching this video guys, I really do appreciate your support to this channel. If you haven't already do make sure you click the subscribe button below so you can get all of the latest videos from the Cool Worlds Laboratory. Thanks again and stay curious.